I think the biggest what if is if Zabit never left. That was a guy that I, but fuck, man. He I was just really bummed out when he stepped out. It broke my heart because I was a very big Zabit fan when he did come up through the UFC. And I personally thought he was of the talent to be one of the better featherweights of all time. And I'm not joking about that. I'm not saying this as just a Zabit fan. I'm saying this as a pure skill point. As in terms of pure skill, he had everything he could he has to beat Yair, to beat these high level guys like Ortega, like Volk. I seriously think he's a nightmare for a guy like Ilya Tuporia. He was so interesting because he was from Dagestan, but he fought like a, he, he, you know, like almost like a karate fighter. It shows in his last fights in the UFC that he did have what it takes, what it took to be a UFC caliber champion. It just needed some tweaks. It needed some differences like his cardio now his cardio was not his fault i'm sure as hell that he is a hard worker but he did have a diaphragm issue and he actually had surgery for it and we never got to see a zabit 100 percent. we always saw a zabit that was great for two rounds and tired out in the third because of that diaphragm issue and because he retired before we even saw him after the surgery it is a big what if of if zabit had cardio if Zabit had a five round build to him, how scary of a UFC featherweight would he have been? A 145er, and I seriously think he would be champion. I mean, we're talking about a Yair sort of fight style mixed in with actual wrestling ability and not a quivering away, if you get what I'm saying. If you look at Yair's losses, sometimes it looks like he lost by him quitting it, it, it's seriously an issue in Yair's game where sometimes it does look like he's just like kind of just out of it if his first plan does not work it's never gonna he's never gonna come back from it and Yair versus Zabit was always a fight that everyone wanted to see because they both are two human tornadoes coming at one another but I th always thought that Zabit would have absolutely ran through Yair because of the wrestling that Zabit does have he has a very underrated striking uh, in terms of just how technical he was, but the wrestling of his was the main bread and butter, in my opinion. When he has that trip, when he has those those judo style trips, he was a force to be reckoned with because those legs are coming at every angle. That even if it is a takedown, it, he's either tripping you, hitting you low in the legs, hitting you in the body, hitting you in the up high with one of the with the most wild techniques. And it was just such a hard task to get through. It was so hard to read what Zabit is going to throw next because his power was blitzing. And in terms of right now, I think Zabit is a nightmare matchup for Tuporia because we see Tuporia when he is against these taller guys that likes to use kicks have very big issues. The Jai Herbert fight was, is a very prominent one where Jai Herbert was able to land a head kick, I mean, flush to Tuporia's face. And the longer, rangier fighters, Tuporia ends up backing up into a corner and getting getting the the big punch getting the big hook but Zabit was a lot more trickier than Jai Herber was a lot trickier than some of these fighters that Tuporia has fought these longer fighters that being backed up against the cage is not the worst scenario for Zabit Zabit is super dynamic in the the fight so Tuporia having a pressure heavy style against Zabit might have actually been a very big issue if they ever did fight and when you mix that in with the wrestling that Zabit gives and as well as just his overall striking game there is a world where Zabit does come back and actually has a really good fight against Ilya the one some questions that we have with Zabit is if he has a chin if his cardio is if the diaphragm issue was even the issue because there is a good chance that the beat is still a guy with only three round cardio not even three rounds two round cardio and so it is a question to see of what the beat could have been the beat could have been this upper echelon guy that i am raving about but the beat could have also been a guy that gasses out really quickly could have been a guy that has this wild first two rounds and once you get past that it's all smooth sailing from there. We see that with guys like Chemaev, where the the first two rounds is is hell. I mean, it's it's you trying to figure out this guy, but as he slowly gets tired because of that fast twitch muscles, it will slowly start going into your favor in a five round affair. 
But if Zabit did have this cardio issue because of that diaphragm surgery, there is always that what if. And I think it is the biggest what if in UFC history, which is what if Zabit never left? And if Zabit never left, what would he be right now? If you asked me years ago, I would have said this man would have been a multiple UFC champion. And the amount of title defense that he would have had would have been insane. And the way I like to break this down, and stay with me here. Think you have the wrestlers of the UFC. You have the Khabibs, you have the Islams, you have the Gilbert Burns, you have the Bilal Muhammad's. All the guys are going to stay on top of you. They're going to grind out four minutes of control time, and they're going to win the match. Then you go to the other side. You have the stylistic strikers, where you have Steven Wonderboy Thompson, Israel Adesanya. You have Yara Rodriguez. You have all these fun strikers. Now imagine taking one on each side and putting them together. That is where you get Zabi. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people want to look at all his fancy kicks, his showtime kicks, all his fancy elbows and stuff like that. I like to break it down as the first four fights he came in the UFC, and I want to preface this by saying he was 6-0 in the UFC. The first four fights, he won by submission in three of them, all by different chokes, rear naked, anaconda, and a knee bar. First of all, that is insane. And then the other fights he wins by United States decision, and a lot of people say against Calvin Cater was very close, and I agree, but we saw Zabi throw these kicks. We, we see him do all this type of striking aspect, and this is exactly what the 145 division needed when he was gone. And it sucks that he left almost perfect timing to where Max and Volk were back and forth, and Max couldn't beat Volk, and Volk was just winning, winning, winning. But now we have Ilya Zaporia, and now is the time that it would have been perfect for Zabit to be here, because I promise you, he would have been champion already. And stylistically, there's not too many people that go against the beat. One of my favorite things I love about the beat is his fadeaway kick. And I don't know what it's called. So if you know what it is, please drop it in the comments. But essentially, he can throw it from anywhere. His hip dexterity is quite literally insane. This man will do 360 tornado kicks. He'll do a showtime kick. He'll chop at your knee. He'll Bruce Lee sidekick you. I mean, this guy had everything in his toolbox. And while I say the boxing wasn't really there, because you see many times, and it was noticeably in the Calvin Cater fight, he would double jab, duck his head, go for a hook, go for a leg kick or something. It was very easy to read. And you kind of see Calvin Cater start to piece that up as the fight progressed. And the only thing, and quite literally the only thing that you had against the beat was that his stamina was crap. While he had the two-year hiatus after his last fight, a lot of people thought, oh, we're going to get a Zabit that has been training in the mountains. He's been training with his cardio and training. But we just never saw that, and he never came back. And it got to the point where it was more of a folklore and more of a, a wish to ever see him back because whether it was for personal reasons, whether it was for UFC not getting a title shot like he was promised, he never came back. And apparently now he's a doctor. Imagine fighting Zabit. Him just piecing you up and you go to the doctor and you see him 12 hours later start to operate on you. I think that's funny. But going back to Zabit, the UFC needed, and they still do need someone in that division that shows not only the Dagestani wrestling that he has, because yes, he's from Dagestan, he wrestles. He looks like Abe Lincoln. Imagine that. He looks like Abe Lincoln that can wrestle while he can also throw every single kick that you've ever known. This is a casual's favorite fighter because this dude's gonna throw every single thing that he knows. He's gonna do the break style kick. Like this man can do it all. And unfortunately, it never went anywhere. He was supposed to fight Yara Rodriguez, and while that fight did not go anywhere, he then left. And it could have been the fight with Yara where it got canceled. And let me preface this. That fight, Zabi and Yair, would have been the best round and a half fight we have ever seen in the UFC. And it sucks if we never got it. I don't think there is anybody other than maybe Islam now, and I wouldn't even say Islam, that shows just how crazy his arsenal is and was. Islam is more of a traditional boom, step, step, through, boom. 
I'm gonna take your leg. Is it beat? It is double jab up, left cut, uh, kick, Superman. This man did it all. And one sequence I like to break down is him against Calvin Cater, where early in the fight, Calvin goes to step in with a one to lead up with his hat and duty two. As he hits the one, you see Zabi get that leg already going. As Cater is firing the two, fires the inside kick and off balances him. And a lot of people say, oh, like it was a, you meant to kick in anyway. Like, no, it is a read that Zabi saw and he did it to a T in almost every single fight. He would fire off these kicks, not knowing if they land, but knowing that they had to be either checked, they had to be thought of, and they had to be game planned. So while maybe he didn't throw all of them at the same time, which most times he did, it was something in the back of the mind of the other fighter that they had to worry about. And when you're worrying about kicks and you're worrying about this and you're worrying about that, are you gonna catch a kick and then try to take him down? The guy that is from Dagestan that wrestles, that has won three out of his six fights by submission, all by different submissions as well. No, you're not going to because you're not that stupid. And the only way that we could have seen Zabit lose is by the cardio and it's by going a four a fifth round and we didn't see that because he didn't fight that much in the ufc he only fought six times and if he fought in the championship fights that's where we would have seen if the beat were a true competitor a true champion which i know he would have been and many ufc fans know he would have and it just sucks because a lot of the times Everyone wants to discount these champions, these Conor McGregor's. Oh, they have no stamina. They have no cardio. But you don't understand. Once you become that champion, you become better. And and you get so much time now because Khabib only took one fight a year. You can cherry pick as terrible as it is. You can cherry pick one fight a year. So all that time, your cardio, your stamina is just boosted, 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 boosted. And it sucks because we never got that with to be. We got just flashes in the pan of what could have been, what could have been this, what could have been that. And to my recollection, the UFC even offered to beat a title fight against Volkanovski. But I'm guessing it was way too late, way too late to repair any type of relationship with to beat in the UFC. And it sucks that something as trivial as just giving this man a title fight when he is running through the division, whether it's Jeremy Stevens, whether it's Calvin Cater, running through yes he didn't win by finish or by submission but this man is beating these top ranked guys and you're not going to give him a title fight i digress from there but at the end of the day is beat what is a one of one talent and we have not seen it replicated other than maybe yara rodriguez but like i said again he does not have the wrestling left to beat and to beat Pairing with his Dagestani wrestling and pairing with his insane striking, we just have not seen it. And I would have loved, loved to see a fight against Volkanovski or a Max Holloway or anybody in these top three rankings of that 145 division to where maybe, just maybe, we could have gotten what we all wished for when we first saw the beat in the UFC. Did you guys agree that Zabit could have been one of the greatest UFC fighters and a champion? You gotta like this. You gotta subscribe. This is why we break it down. This is why we do this. But if you guys have any other wishes for videos, anything like that, please leave in the comments. We do use your videos every single week. We just gotta know what you want. So thank you guys for watching this long. And as always, it's been studs.